Phantom Drone is something that seems to trouble people on internet forums. We see a lot of chatter about whether someone's EV is suffering from it and what they can do about it. What is Phantom Drain and what causes it? Today we'll discuss those very concerns. I'll go into what it is as well as what it isn't. If this is a subject that troubles you, then stay with me as I go into all of the details. Phantom Drain, also known as Vampire Drain or perhaps Parasitic Drain, is when an EV loses charge over a period of time, sapping the car's ability to do the range that the car had when it was initially parked. If you intend to leave your car unattended for a period, perhaps leaving it at an airport or train station while you go on holiday, then this might be of concern to you. You might wonder if you'll be stranded when you get back. Well, the good news is that you probably won't. There are a few different symptoms I want to discuss and how they relate to this issue. Firstly, if you come out to your EV in the morning and find that its estimated range has reduced whilst its remaining percentage is the same, then that's perfectly normal. The estimated range that a car shows will be impacted by a number of factors, especially your driving efficiency on some of your recent trips, but also the current temperature. Temperature plays a part in how an EV uses energy for a number of reasons. Firstly, it impacts air density. A reduction in temperature increases air density, thereby increasing the car's losses to aerodynamic drag. Secondly, a colder battery is slightly less efficient than a warmer one. The internal resistance of the battery increases slightly in colder temperatures, and the chemical reactions that make the battery work are also impacted somewhat reducing the amount of energy that can be released. Next, cooling and heating the cabin play a part in the energy usage of the car. Needing to heat the cabin in colder weather will take some energy from the system, reducing the amount available for driving. Finally, mechanical losses in bearings are also affected a bit by temperature. For all these reasons, an EV adjusts its range estimation based upon the current temperature. It's guessing at the sort of range you will get in the current conditions, ensuring you know where you stand. As the car often cools down overnight, losing heat to the surroundings once solar gain is lost and the temperature drops, it's common for the car's range to be lower in the morning than it might have been when you stopped using it the previous day. This is not phantom drain. It's a change in the range estimate. So don't worry about that particular symptom. It's perfectly normal and you can dismiss it in this regard. The second thing you can notice is a small reduction in the battery's state of charge, the percentage shown on the display, usually a single percent, and that's usually not phantom drain either. There can be a couple of causes to this. Firstly, you can get a small amount of voltage sag as the car sits unused and cools down, as the voltage of the cells is often used as an indication of its state of charge more so for NMC chemistries than LFP, by the way. This can cause the display to change a bit. However, it might be way less than it seems. Remember that the value on the display is often being rounded. It's the nearest whole number of digits. And so a reduction of just a tenth of a percent can change the display in the extreme. If you see your car go from 80% to 79%, that might be a whole percent used or it might be as little as going from 79.5 to 79.4%, with the effect of rounding doing the rest. So if those aren't phantom drain, then what is? What we're looking for is a steady reduction in the battery percentage over a number of days of inactivity when the car isn't in use. If that's happening, then you might have some phantom drain. Even then, we really only need to be concerned with a loss of more than 1% per day, because it's normal for an EV to use a bit of energy as it stands. This is just a function of how they work. An EV, you see, has two electrical systems, not one. Firstly, it has a high voltage system that is used to drive the motor, the cabin heating and the air conditioning. Secondly, it has a low voltage system powered by the accessory battery under the bonnet. This low voltage system is used to power the lights, the wipers, the locks and windows, as well as all the car's electronics, its brain. As with an ICE car, 
parts of the car's brain are not entirely off when the car is not driving. There will be a few bits doing security related tasks. A part of the telematics will also remain powered, just enough for you to be able to contact the car's systems from the app. Finally, the electronics monitoring the two batteries remain powered. That allows the car to respond to any timers that might be set, either to initiate charging of the high voltage traction battery or preheat the car, but also whether maintenance activities are needed on either of those batteries. Unlike in an ICE car, an EV has no alternator to keep the accessory battery charged. Instead, it is charged more efficiently using the DC to DC converter, taking power from the high voltage traction battery. And that continues even when the car is not in use, to recoup any energy used to power any of the items we've just discussed. So a little energy use is to be expected. The use we might expect does vary a bit by make and model as some tasks that cars do use a bit more power than others. One example of this is Tesla's sentry mode. When this mode is enabled, a Tesla continues to run its cameras and uses a little computing power to identify changes to the surroundings that might indicate a security concern. If anything is detected, the video from the cameras is captured to a memory stick for later review. In order to achieve this, the cameras and the compute to sense the surroundings must remain on, and so sentry mode is known to deplete the car's energy reserve, and hopefully it makes sense why when you think what the car is doing. For completeness, I should say that the Rivian gear guard feature is doing something very similar. We don't get Rivians here in Europe just yet, but this is an effect that is noticeable in American R1s. I should also note that the impact of these small energy usages will vary by battery size. It will be more noticeable on a car with a small battery. After all, a smaller battery offers a smaller energy store, so the percentage change of the traction battery will be greater in a car with a smaller battery, even though the same amount of energy might be getting used. If you really do have phantom drain, a loss of multiple percent across several days of inactivity, then the automatic recharging of the accessory battery we mentioned earlier is often covering up the root cause. Phantom drain is usually going to be a loss of energy from the low voltage system, as the high voltage system is usually disconnected by the contactors when the car is not in use, unless this recharging process causes it to be reconnected temporarily. Very often, phantom drain is caused by one of three things. The first is if the accessory battery is on its way out. That is the cheap replaceable battery under the bonnet. This is usually a lead acid battery in anything other than a Tesla. Lead acid batteries do not last indefinitely and need to be replaced, usually every three to five years. The same as for an internal combustion engine vehicle as it happens. But if it can't hold the charge properly, then the car may regularly top it up, only for that charge to be lost again and for the top up to be repeated. The second potential cause for phantom drain is an accessory or feature that remains powered. This can be something like diagnostics equipment. Remember that anything plugged into the OBD port of a car can sometimes continue to use power even when the car is off, so consider that when investigating any concern. Similarly, requests to the car via its API by a third-party diagnostic service, such as Recurrent or Tesla Info, or by your charge point operator, may cause a bit more drain if they query the car frequently. So disable those if you suspect a problem. The third potential cause for phantom drain is a control module that is not powering down properly, continuing to function when it shouldn't due to a fault. This also happens in ICE cars, but the effect in an ICE car is either a low or very flat battery after the car is left for a while, as the 12 volt battery of an ICE car is only topped up when the engine is running, whereas an EV can usually do this even when the car is idle. There is one other effect that we need to discuss briefly, and that's a slow loss of energy inside the battery itself, known as self-discharge. This is a real effect and happens to almost all batteries. However, in the lithium ion batteries that we use in electric cars, this is a pretty slow effect. You might see a loss of a percent or two from self-discharge over a month or more, 
but it's higher when the state of charge is high, so it tends to slow down over many months. If you want to leave your car unused for many months, then this is an effect you need to be aware of. But a loss of a couple of percent a month isn't all that significant. Be mindful of it, but don't stress about it. So the million dollar question is how big an effect is normal? Well, I suppose I should be telling you in detail what my Zoe does after painstaking research and detailed analysis, but I can't. It's not an effect I've noticed very much. I think it lost a couple of percent over the last couple of days when not being used. But then it's also not an effect I'm really concerned about, so I'm not really looking for it all that often. This is not something I lose sleep over. I don't stress about it. Having said that, I have friends who left their Hyundai Ioniq unused for a couple of weeks recently, and after 14 days away, they had seen a drop of 5%. The Ionic has a fairly small battery of about 38 kilowatt hours, so that's a loss of about 1.8 kilowatt hours in that time. Something like 130 watt hours per day, a pretty small amount of energy. So if you're leaving your car for a couple of weeks, then it's probably not something to worry about unduly. If you can, try to leave the car with 40 or 50% state of charge before you leave. Then, even if your return is significantly delayed, your car will be absolutely fine. One final note is to say that this automated 12 volt accessory battery top up process seems to stop at low states of charge of the main traction battery. So you're more likely to find the 12 volt battery flat than the high voltage battery if things were to go wrong. Either battery being flat would of course be annoying, but replacing the 12 volt is a pretty cheap fix. The high voltage battery is only really at risk if you leave the car unattended for many months. In that scenario, try to leave it plugged into a powered charge point. Set a relatively low maximum charge percentage, say something like 50 to 70% if possible, and it'll maintain itself while you're gone. In summary, phantom drain in EVs is a real effect, but it's not actually all that common. It gets talked about a lot because people see a small change in a figure on the dash and worry, when in reality it's probably perfectly normal. An EV's range is regularly recalculated, so if you see that change overnight, then don't worry. That's entirely what I'd expect, that's just weather compensation. If you see the remaining percentage of the battery change by a single percent, then don't panic about that either. It could be much less than a percent that has been lost, hidden in the rounding that occurs when the figure needs to be displayed on the dash. If instead your car loses multiple percent on subsequent days of inactivity, then, and only then, you might have phantom drain. Check that there are no timers enabled for preheating the cabin. Disable any third-party apps accessing the car's API, and disable any high draw security features to rule those out. For example, Teslas are known for a little bit of phantom drain, but it's most obvious when sentry mode is activated. If all of that is disabled, and it is still happening, then you might need to get your car looked at. It might have an issue, but it would most likely be on the low voltage system, not the high voltage system, as the high voltage battery is disconnected by the contactors when the car is off. Thanks very much for joining me today. Your questions and comments on this subject are most welcome. Let's keep the information flowing in the comments section. In particular, I'd like to hear your experiences. Have you witnessed phantom drain on your electric car? What make and model was it? And how significant was it? If you've liked the video, then it's a help to me if you click the thumbs up button. And consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see more from me. Thanks.